Hey, what's going on boys? So when I think of Aurelian Soul, one player comes to mind and that's Sweaty A Soul on the NA server. He's currently ranked 14 in Challenger with a 67% win rate on Aurelian and a 5.5 KDA. This guy's Aurelian is insane. I've watched a lot of this guy's VODs and it's just amazing to see how much he can influence the map in the early to mid game on this champion. So today I'm going to be doing a VOD review of his A Soul versus Shifter's Talia. I think it's a good game to look at. Um, and I'm just going to try to convey to you guys how he holds so much map pressure on this champion and how he utilizes its kit to kind of dictate the early and the mid game through its roam. So jumping into the runes, you've just got Phase Rush, um, it's a Nullifying Orb, Celerity and Water Walking just to make sure you can roam really quickly. And then of course in the Precision Tree for the Presence of Mind and the Coupe de Gras. Now the Presence of Mind is so important, I'll talk about it in the game. Um, it's just going to help you get those early kills. That's why he runs Ignite so often. So without further ado, let's get straight into the gameplay. So heading to game, I want to touch on the matchup Asol into Talia. They honestly have pretty much the exact same playstyle. Hard shove into Roams. Get into the river and try and snowball your side laners. Asol wins out this early because he has a better shove, more DPS. Um, Talia has a window in the mid game to outperform, but Asol is going to outscale you. He has a better range, better team fight in the late game. So it's honestly in Asol's favor. You'll see the textbook level 1 ASOL here. You want to move up into the wave and just shred it down. Push the Talia under tower. Now this is just mainly, you want to make the Talia not only miss CS, but you also want to get these auto harasses down. Prepping for a level 2 kill, guys. Always go for level 2 kill on ASOL with the presence of mind. Um, if I'm smurfing or something, I can get a solo kill pretty much every game on ASOL here. Nobody respects the presence of mind all in. So you see him move up, he, he's wanting to hit that level 2 first. Shifter does play as Sol, he should know, should back up and respect it. Nothing can match this all in. Shoves in. Now anybody can copy this A Sol style early on guys, it's really easy to do and it performs great. You'll, you'll get great rewards from doing this. Um, Shifter is 4 CS to 10 on the first two waves. He's already missed 8 CS. Um, <laughs> pretty horrendous, just unlucky timings I guess. So Asol moving up again, maybe looks for the level 3 all in, maybe just goes for level 3 back. On Asol, as soon as you get level 3, you get your E, which means you're going to be moving around the map much quicker. You can back here, get boots, you can get a Dark Seal, Control Ward maybe. Um, we'll see what he picks up, but it just means that you can shove in, get back to lane and miss no CS, while your opponent's kind of stuck with clearing the waves. The so Dark Seal and Control Ward. The Control Ward on Asol is super important because like, as you see, when you're clearing waves on Asol, you need to move up a little bit deeper into, into the lane. So if you have a mid lane um, control control wood in that side brush, you can just hug that side to safety. It's much easier to do with less risk. If you're playing on something like a Java or something, it's really hard to move up safely for the clear without any vision. The shifter's looking to grab a base in. Asol is going to have enough time to shove and look for a roam. So before these roams, you just want to be like, I'm usually F key toggling, looking at top, looking at bot, looking at the waves. So bot lane's base, there's no gank there, so top lane's the only place here to look for a gank. Shifter has a lane ward, like, a lot of people ask me, why do you lane ward? It's so that, against these roamers, like now, they see the ASOL moving top side. so Shifter should be spam pinging out to the Jax, he does. Jax says, fuck you, I have a ward here, he's not moving. <laughs> okay. Adrian Ribbon gets caught. He should be able to get killed, you have Ignite and Flash. Pops it in, grabs a kill. I mean, just copy this type of playstyle early on in your own games, guys, if you're playing ASOL. These first four levels are pretty much just universal ASOL. What everybody does, all the good ASOLs do in the early game. That level 2 all in, like, a lot of the times it'll net you a solo kill, but if it doesn't, just get the base in at level 3, come back to land with a dark seal, hard shove, and then just look for the roams. From level 4 and onwards, I mean, you're honestly just looking to shove, get into the side lanes. DPSing out Shifter, um, just not respecting the A Soul. I don't. Shifter plays. I've seen Shifter play A Soul. He's just not respecting the range. Has to blow the cleanse. It just means that now the next all in from A Soul is you, you're dead. You're gonna have to flash out, or you're dead. Boots Sapphire Crystal looking to go into that um the GLP of course and the Aurelian. 
it's going to be interesting to see what happens next patch, actually, with the Aurelian Soul. Um, I don't know what the new build path is going to be. I make a pick onto the Nidalee Shift that picks up the kill. With Aurelian, it's pretty easy to prep the minion line, guys. Like, if you get your... Um, you want to make sure your Ws are small, and then you just want to get... Knock them one, the backline minions, and you can just auto them for the last hit. You can just like prep them under tower, it's really easy to do. Control with mid top side, also one in the mid bot side river. He doesn't path through that bush. If you're playing Aurelian, if you're playing Talia, anything like TF, a lot of the times the enemy teams wards this this brush right here. Honestly, always make sure you run through it. And right, I always make sure like I'm attack move, like attack I attack move into the brushes so that if there is something, I don't miss it, and I'm always just gonna auto attack it. Right here, see the prepping? Just one one orb through and just auto attack for last hits. 14 CS lead for the Aurelian. I mean 14 CS, that's almost a kill, just just straight up in CS. Um, Bellifying Orb. He's, you're actually pretty tank in the A soul. It's really hard to get a kill on you. Especially as you come into items. You get really tanky. Nullifying Orb. You've got an ultimate to knock them away and kite back. It's it's pretty nice to have. It's a pretty nice kit, to be honest. Gets the Catalyst. Like right now, um, A soul is just looking to shove and impact the map. He's only got the one uh, successful roam topside, but the map's going to start opening up, especially now that bot lane's already dropped the tower. This Draven is fucking popping off. Aesol's a very awkward champion, and, and like, it's very unique. There's no there's no champion really like it, but it, it'll take you 10 or 15 games to kind of get the hang of, the, of where to stand with the orbs. And after that, it's honestly not that hard of a champion to master, guys. It's just getting the feel of how to move and how your orb is going to play out. Then you can start looking at your Q and ult mechanics, and then after that, it's it's not that hard. It's more about knowing how to play the map. Interesting wall there by Shifter. Doesn't quite <laughs> catch him out. He gets out. I think if he got cut in there, he would have died with no flash. Grabs the Drake. Snoonu is still holding them up pretty well. Looking to steal away the blue buff. Fuck me, everybody looking topside here. Be a massive fight breaking out. Instead, he backs up, grabs the Merc Treads. I mean, Merc Treads are going to be great against Nunu Slow, Talia Slow, um, even Callista Slow. It, it's just going to help you a lot, especially into if uh, if Shifter like lands one burst combo, it's going to protect you a lot with the MR as well. Most of the time on ASOL you're looking for are the Merc Treads or a Ninja Tabai. You're more defensive. It's kind of like a TF. It's kind of like how Apto plays TF with the boots. It's usually always defensive boots. Sork Shoes and Boots of Speed. I mean, they're, they're two other options that are possible, but in all honesty, the Merc Treads are probably like 80% of your bias. You want to make sure that nothing's on top of you. Nothing's getting that slows. Bit of tenacity. Moves into the oh fuck this is gonna be a cleanup. Just watch how he positions with all his orbs. He's still holding onto his ultimate. Holy fuck, quadra kill. <laughs> Gets them ten stacks on the dark seal. Pops a little bit of a BM with a moat. I mean he just played that great. He moved into the side lane. Um, just clean up. Enemy team kind of overcommitted. A soul just moves in and cleans it. And now he has 5 kills, I mean, you expected at this stage to just snowball the game. 
Level 7, you, you put your 2 points into your E guys, so it's much, much bigger of a range. But level 7 is a massive power spike for Aesol. The Draven gets caught out. Who can help him, but he can't quite. The shift has come back in this game. He had a he struggled really hard in the early game, but got a couple of nice picks. The CS problem is, is honestly, he's down twenty or so CS. Great GLP buy. Now GLP is GLP is so good for Asol because you just want to start it with any initiation, and you can just run them down. It means then you can get your Ws on, get the phase rush, and just there's no escape for the enemy unless they have flash. You're too quick. So at this stage, you're not only looking for roams, you can actually start looking for 1v1s. You're really strong in the 1v1. You just gotta... If you can dodge out the Talia's W, she's fucked. There's no way out. He has to flash. Fuck, there's Predator. Jax has Predator, okay. Predator Jax, what? Is that a thing? I... <laughs> Maybe just testing. Testing numbers. Amy team's actually coming back into this really well. They're playing towards Callista. Catches out the Callista. You can't run. Just greedy by the enemy team that are respecting the the Aesol. It's so strange, like when you play Aesol, you expect the enemy team to really respect your uh your orbs, your ganks, but in all honesty, a lot of the time you're surprised. You're like, why the hell are they not backing up and you just walk in and take free kills? People don't really understand how mobile you are and how you can just go from lane to lane so fucking quickly without water walking with your with your E um, passive. It's so fucking nice. Nunu grab like Nunu's objective control has been on point. Feeling blues, taking rift, setting him up for maybe like a strong mid game. Gets caught out by the Talia W there. And Aesol, he, he drops out. I mean, it's just bad positioning onto the tower there. You can never, without Flash, you can never be positioning like that into Rakan Talia. I mean, as much as you want, the Rakan's just going to come straight in and knock you up and you're fucked. You're really, like, you, you, you're you mobile, right? But in small, like, uh, team fights, you're really immobile. You need to ultimate at the perfect time to kind of kite them off. Otherwise, you're just going to get, you're going to be stuck up. Your orbs are not going to be firing and you're going to get pummeled. If you are looking for a counter to Aesol guys, Kassadin, Echo, um, things that can just jump straight onto his character and he can't get you off. Because of course, if you're inside the orb range, he's got no damage. You can't Q on top of yourself. Your Q comes out in front of you. So if you're, sit if you're sitting on top of Aesol, he can't get you off. So like if you're on Echo, you're just sitting on him autoing. He there's no way he can get you off. The only way is ultimate. You can E dash to the side and even then you can still catch him. It's gonna be interesting to see how he plays in mid game. I've seen a lot of the Korean ASOLs, they move into side lanes early on. So like for like for instance here, they might just move straight into the bot lane side lane, shove in. You need that top side to drop first to be honest though. With these roamers, when the two outer uh, tier 3s drop, um, that's when you want to start doing it, going into a 1-3-1. I want to see these two go at it for a 1v1. 100% Aesol would win. There's no way you'd win uh, the 1v1 if you're the Vitalia. <laughs> okay. What is Shift? Shifter just doesn't respect it, gets caught out. Just like I said, like the Aesol is going to dominate you. You start with the GLP, you just run them down. Pops the BMMO, gets the mid tower. Doesn't commit, sees the Rakan and Kalista perhaps. Moves it back down to the river. What the? <laughs> Absolute mess, holy shit. Nah drops. Nidalee as well. 
This Callista could actually be a really big problem for them if they don't get a... Like, if the Callista just sits and scales and, and they play slow front to back. I mean, Callista, Nunu, Jax, Rakan. Kind of a, it's a nice combo to have. Has the flash there for the Rakan, can get out safely. Watch how he team fights. When you team fight on A-Soul, you kind of just want to sit in the middle of everybody, especially in the later stages. He drops off onto the side a little bit here, just kind of to get, get away with the jacks. Dude, red team's actually coming back into the game. They have Rift Herald spawned today. 30 CS lead by the A-Soul at the moment. I'm not sure what Shift has been doing, dude. I don't understand how CS per min is so low at the moment. Just committing for all these Fiesta roams, I guess. You see how he's standing out a little bit there? You don't want to be... If you're hugging into where the needle is, they can see your orbs. Don't be doing that. Move up a little bit. Make sure they can't see you and spot you out. Get the Jukes out on the GLP. You should be... Be safe. If you got hit by the GLP frontline, though, you would have died 100%. Good little play by Shifter, gets himself out of, out of harm's way. They're still not dropping into a 1-3-1 style, they're still just committing for... He's just sitting mid, he's just mid-centric style. Also that Dark Seal ramping up. I mean, a lot of the times we see A-Soul getting the Soul Stealer, but in games like these, it's kind of hard to commit. If you don't have Flash, the Jax and Rakan, they're just going to kill you. I think um, Soul Steel is great if they have really, if they lack really good engage. Like if they have no engage whatsoever, I don't know, say they have a Jace, bucket, like Graves, like low CC um, champions, maybe like a Lulu or something, and you can just sit in the back line and nothing's going to threaten you. I think Soul Steel is not that bad of a buy, but if they have something that jumps onto you, Jax, Rakan, if you have no Flash, you're dead. There's no two ways about it, so you probably are going to die. Um in this type of game, so I don't think it's that valuable. We're gonna catch up the Draven. Enemy team, dude, they're actually making really nice picks. Nelly's gonna solo the Drake out. No one's gonna give a fuck about Cloud. Although I love Cloud on Aurelion. I can call it once again. His positioning has been pretty questionable. He had a really nice early game, and then like, he just played way too cocky. Not playing with his team, playing solo. Alright, so they're moving into kind of getting a little bit of Baron control. Their Baron is honestly not that quick. I would definitely not commit for it. Um, into a Nunu, you really want to be careful with these objectives. You, you, like most of the time, you want to like bait it out. You get the Baron down about 3k or so, and then you just call your team to turn. Because if you commit to like a 2k, you get Baron around about 2k, then Nunu's going to be coming in looking for the steal. It's impossible to outsmite that shit. Interesting to see that you don't, he doesn't really he hasn't sold the um the corrupting potion. A lot of the time you'll see like really high like in in Korea you'll see players sell that off or just like they'll get two or three control wards or something like that just to make sure you always have uses that ultimate there to kind of peel himself off from the jacks. That's kind of lucky. A lot of time in like the high elos in Korea you'll see them sell it off for the get the, get the control wards to make sure you have um just great vision control over these big objectives like Baron in the mid game. This should be a Baron commit now, though. They, they do have to be careful for the Nunu, but... He's just a one-man. If Nunu goes for the steal. Um... Wait, Nidalee? <laughs> uh... What? I got a Blast gone over, but she missed. The Draven just pokes it down. Shoving in here, I mean, with the Baron now, you just want a five-man group, honestly. With A-Soul, if you... This is the worst. I hate... 
you get Baron and you're, you're you're setting up for a siege and then somebody plays risky and gets picked. It happens every fucking game, man. It tilts me so much when this happens. It's like because now you just waste you literally waste like 40 seconds of potential Baron siege. A lot of like Aesol is such a nice champ of a 5v5, especially in this meta with a lot of hyper carry AD carries. If you sit in the middle of the team fight with your ultimate and Q as peel, nothing, you just don't allow anything in or out. So anything that comes in, you explode and peel. Um, and anything outside, they're just always scared of your orbs. It's really hard to play into the A soul, into the later stages of the game. Good ultimate by the Leona. First has a QSS, so it's all good. All good. Um, looking for that top lane in here. They should be able to get it. Their siege is really nice. What is the enemy? Alia. Okay, they're all just chasing the Nili. I mean, they don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. Nili just laying down a life for the team. Good war by Shifter. Jack's coming in. That ultimate, you can just like, you can just kill yourself. Really nice. Enemy team just commits way too hard. Raven's too fed. They, they can't end here. It's really risky. I don't think they can. These are the worst types of calls. Like, you're better off in these... In these points in Saluki, guys, you're just better off playing slow and playing smart rather than just going, okay, maybe we can end. I've seen so many games thrown at that point where they go, end, 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 and they just get aced. And the enemy team makes a massive swing. Don't bother. Just, just like, if you drop the inhib, just respawn, reset, get your items, come back in, and then just start sieging the opposite side of the inhib. So, like, mid, like, early to mid game, it's all about roams. And then I feel like mid to late game, it's more about team fighting, 5v5ing, and just shoving in for the objectives. Like, obviously, you can still play side lane and roam, but your team fight is way superior to the Tal Talia's team fight in the late game is, is honestly really bad. Like, I'm a Talia player, and... Playing the Talia in the later stages of the game, I hate it. Your damage output compared to a lot of other mages is just fucking shit. Especially with the build that Shift is going with the Rylas. Very interesting build. <laughs> Grabs the Drake, fourth Drake of the game, no Infernals. Splitting the opposite side of the inhib. The Baron has worn out though. I don't know how much you can get front of siege with no baron. They're gonna de uh, defend the inhib structure. Watch how he plays it, guys. As they soul, you know that Draven's a carry and you just wanna stick behind him. He gets caught up there, Rakan, flashes back, boom. Just sitting right in the middle, guys. Right in the middle. Now he sees the opportunity, moves in, moves aggressively. Rakan is having some really nice engages onto the, the Aurelian, but he just always has the flash um, available or the ultimate, except that one time. Only time he died was then, so... It's very hard to kill the Ace Souls. That's why you see a lot of Ace Souls have really nice KDAs. If you know how to if you know how to position an Ace Soul, it's super hard to die a lot of times. I've been bothered to drop. You probably don't want to hard commit here. He's coming up clutch. Way too much damage. Fuck me, that's risky, but they get it. Ace reset, mid lane shove into an end is the should be the game plan. Fourth. If you're not picking up Void Star fourth, you better have a good reason for it. Like if the enemy team has zero MR, maybe. Grabs the drift there. They can catch out anybody here, it could just be the end of the game. Nuna gets popped. Nunu is having a shocker. Aurelian pops off, gets the kills. And boss, you can't run away from the Aurelian at that stage. Drops the BM and Moment closes the game. I mean, this is just a textbook ASOL game. I hope you guys have learned how to play ASOL in the, in the early stages. Like, the later stages of the game, it's not really that hard, but a lot of people really struggle with the early game. 
I see too many A-Souls playing passive, not really knowing what to do or how to snowball games. You'll see, you see there, like, the, the, the first three, four levels are really important to play in that style. Um, 20 A-Soul plays well, goes 11, 1, and 14. 25 out of 31 of the kill participations is his, so it's just an insane game, especially in these high elos.